Hello there. I hope you enjoy the tips, the do's, the don'ts, and find the courage to do it yourself remodeling. Welcome to our remodeled bathroom. The bathroom before. I'm sure the lady loved purple and wallpaper. Note, wallpaper may be coming back. Our house was built in 1954. The size is about 1,400 square feet. The bathroom is seven by five feet. To appreciate the lovely, you must see the labor. The hot air gun helped remove the glue or mastic from the sheetrock. It was worth the price. Here's a tip for you. In a house this small, every nook and cranny is an opportunity to be creative. Wait until you see where our plunger lives. Removing the plastic tiles wasn't so bad, but the glue underneath was so stinky. Once the tiles were removed, we painted with kills to literally kill the smell. And it makes a good primer paint too. Speaking of wallpaper, would you believe I tore off the wallpaper opposite the porcelain throne two years before we started remodeling? Why, you ask? Because a woman spends way more time looking at the opposite wall and unappealing is unappealing, so I peeled. unsolicited advice. People, if you're looking for a spouse, make sure you get someone who can help with the remodeling. The ugly task of replacing the toilet. Yuck! A few more plastic tiles to remove and then some 12 by 12 inch porcelain tiles in their place and then the hardest part, standing upright. All cleaned up. Now we're ready to lay the cement boards before we lay the tile. Cement 4x4 boards aren't expensive and a must in an old house so tiles will lay smoothly. To be sure the pattern worked, I laid out the tiles in the living room and used masking tape and a pencil to mark the matching sides. Then I handed them off one by one to Bob. After trying several newer floor coverings, I'm back to the peel and stick tiles. They're easier to clean, item less likely to break if dropped, easy to replace or repair, way less cost, and less cold in the northern winters. My shower design needed a curved shower curtain rod, too pricey to purchase. So Bob learned how to bend PVC pipe on YouTube. Bob practiced a while, then he got the hang of it and filled the half inch PVC pipe with sand, put two bends in one end and voila, a tailor-made curtain rod. You can find way better instructions on YouTube. You will see later why this special item was needed. I didn't include how the tiles were set in place. That's about as exciting as watching paint dry. The original medicine cabinet fit just inside this space. Bob enlarged the space. Someone called the type of cabinet Bob is building old fashioned, but I call it efficient. Since we wanted the light over the mirror area, Bob had to reroute the wires. Here he is removing the block of wood to allow a path for the wiring. The vanity lights have been removed and the opening squared.
The electrical wires are now in position to be connected to the lights. Please excuse the fuzziness. This is the cabinet's outer frame before the back is added. The back has been added to the outer frame and a top panel added on which the lights will be mounted. It will have two doors, one large with the mirror, one smaller to the left. Just checking to see if it all works. I love cardboard. This cardboard top serves as a tray to hold all the tools when not being used, keeping things in order during the building process. And they're free. Stick around, maybe you'll get some ideas and tips to help spruce up your small bathroom. Because we are tight on space, I asked Bob to put some shelves left of the cabinet. The center is deeper while the sides are more shallow. Having the deeper portions help a lot. I love my makeup area. The bathroom is narrow, thus many narrow photos. This is the best toilet we've ever owned. See how smooth the pedestal is? No muss, no fuss. By the way, Bob refaced the lower cabinet. Here's why it is necessary to have a curved shower rod. Because the shower supplies are in the corner, it was necessary for the rod to bend around the shower caddy. Since we have an exterior window, it is necessary to have two shower curtains, one for the window and one to keep water in the tub. The front curtains have been split down the middle. Six magnets keep the pair closed. By spreading out the two clear curtains, the back one keeps the wall clean and the front one, yep, keeps the floor dry. Because the tub is old and small, I've glued corresponding magnets in the back shower curtain and the wall to keep the curtain tight against the wall when in use. Why is there a rug and flower in the bathtub? Technically, there are three shower curtains but the dark brown one is for accenting the dark brown color in the tiles. It was my hope as designer to combine both new and rugged accents. I really like the two by two slate tiles. There are so many earthly colors. Did you see where our plunger lives? Under the basket flower arrangement. Here are some of the products we purchased. No, we do not sell any products. We only share ideas. The rug in the tub mystery. Rug in a tub serves three purposes. A place for heater, stain cover, and flower stand. Small room heater doesn't have to be ugly. A large round piece of fabric and elastic edging makes a fine cover like a shower hat. On the opposite side of the fabric, a second option, perhaps for spring. Why I made this video, I am very proud of my husband's woodworking and our ability to collaborate. It's not always a smooth ride, but we know it's always a win-win. We're not copycats, we are creative. We hope you may be inspired to tackle the difficult and to create the unique. Be unique.